Welcome all. I'm Julie Hold on. Harm. I'll get started. Uh, this is Dave. Sorry. I've got a couple uh, housekeeping items. Julie, we appreciate your passion. And with that, we welcome you to the Missouri Association of College Admissions Counseling. We've got an exciting fair today. Before we get started, we'll answer um, a couple quick items here. So if you have questions, you can do so using the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also note that your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Note as well that we have additional sessions available, so if you have interest in one of those, go ahead and sign up at your leisure. Lastly, note a recording of this session will be made available about five days after the call here, and it can be found at strivescan.com slash Missouri. With that, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Hello all, thank you, welcome. Let me get my presentation up here just shortly. I'm Julie Harm, a transfer specialist at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Um, a little bit about UMSL, we're founded in 63. Uh, we are the largest public university in the St. Louis area offering undergraduate, graduate, and professional degrees. We've got an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, average class size of 27 students, and our current total enrollment is around 16,000 students. A little about our students. We have students from 50 states, uh, 78 countries. 27% of our students on campus are classified as underrepresented. Also, 94% of our students have jobs or are accepted into graduate programs within six months of graduating, with an average starting salary of around 44,000. We also have uh, 50 plus majors, including cybersecurity, nursing, biochem, biotech, business administration, and more. We have some partnership fast track programs with uh, veteran medicine, medicine and biosciences. We have great uh, amount of study abroad opportunities for students in 40 different countries with $100,000 in scholarships available for students to have those opportunities. Uh, we have research opportunities for undergrad students as well and amazing state of the art facilities. Some of the programs that we have that are our pride and joy, our criminology and criminal justice program, our international business program, our college of business program as well. It's AACSB accredited for both accounting and business. Uh, so that puts us as one in five universities with that accreditation in Missouri. We also certify the most teachers in the state of Missouri through our college of education. And we offer a joint undergraduate engineering program with Washington University for civil, electrical, and mechanical engineering. UMSL students get to pay the UMSL price while going to WashU those last couple years. We also have an honors college, the Pierre Laclede Honors College. It's a great liberal arts uh, community and atmosphere. No exams, just writing and discussion-based courses, research, internship opportunities, uh, small class sizes, and our students receive $500 to $3,000 in scholarships just by being a part of the Honors College. Also, if you're wanting to live on campus, we've got a couple options. Oak Hall is a residential style option with uh, four single bedrooms in per suite. We also have heated saltwater pools, living learning communities, and a 24-hour laundry room with gender-inclusive suite options as well. Now, if you're wanting to do apartment options, we've got Mansion Hill Apartments as well as University Meadows, both the furnished and unfurnished, some pet-friendly units, um, both have shuttle stops to get around campus as well. In regards to student life, we've got 120 plus different student organizations, but beyond that, one of my favorite things was our work and wellness center. It's 10,000 square feet of awesome fitness space um, for cardio, strength training, equipment, uh, fitness classes as well, all free for our students. We also have our two Hill Performing Arts Center uh, and 17 NCAA Division II athletic teams, newest being indoor and outdoor cross and country track and field. We're also pretty close to the St. Louis metropolitan area, so very close to all sorts of fun things to do. Um, we're probably only around 10 to 15 minutes away from the arch, so there's lots to do and eat and see here in St. Louis. Now, how to apply to UMSL. We have um, an undergraduate application on our admissions page. Go to UMSL Apply Now. We ha you have a $35 application fee, but it's waived currently for summer and fall of 21, also if you visit campus. And then transcripts should be sent to admissions at umsl.edu. So our transfer admission requirements. We have, uh, we require 24 credit hours of post high school college work and then at least an average 2.3 GPA over all your transfer work. If you have less than 24 hours, we look for you to reach our first time freshman um, college admission requirements. 
We've also got some great transfer resources for students. Um, we have transfer guides for area community colleges. We have credit, uh, credit equivalency to show how courses um, transfer from one school to UMSL. We also have unofficial transcript pre-evaluations. Um, that's to see how your credits transfer into the degree that you're desiring. We also have appeal processes and articulation agreements. Our current cost of attendance per year is around 11,500. Uh, that's if you're doing 30 credit hours, per year, 15 credit hours per semester. If you're wanting to live on campus as well in say Oak Hall, it's around a little under 22,000 per year. For financial aid and scholarships, um, once you're admitted, you get a uh, comprehensive financial aid package with scholarships, grants, work study, student loans, um, all clarified. Um, our also our transfer competitive scholarship deadline is April 1st. So for that incoming fall, you'd wanna get admitted and uh, apply for those competitive scholarships before April 1st. Now, last but not least, we have some awesome automatic transfer scholarships for students. Our first is our associate's degree completion scholarship starting at $1,000. If you complete an AA or AS with a 3.0 GPA or above, um, uh, you receive that scholarship. An UMSL Gateway Transfer Scholarship can stack on top of that at $2,000. Um, for transfer of 45 credits with a 3.25 cumulative GPA. And if you have a 3.5 GPA or above with those 45 credit hours or more, you would receive the Chancellor's Transfer Scholarship coming in from a Missouri Community College or SWIC or Lewis and Clark Community College. Uh, that's $3,500. And uh, either the Chancellor's or Gateway Scholarships can stack on top of the Associate's Degree Completion Scholarship. These scholarships have rolling deadlines. They are merit-based. You don't have to apply to them. So as a transfer student, you would automatically, um, uh, automatically get these. Anyway, that's um, about it for me. Uh, this is my contact information. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. We're on to our next presenter from Quincy University. All right, thank you very much. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much. My name is Justin Ray. I am the Associate Director of Transfer Admissions at Quincy University. And so for those of you who may not know where QU is located, we are in Quincy, Illinois, which is maybe 10 minutes from the Missouri border, the Missouri Eastern border, I should say. Um, we are along the Mississippi. We're an old river town and we're very proud of that. Um, so Quincy University, uh, we uh, stand by what we like to call success by design. We view uh, students' success uh, through their college journey, their academic success, success on the playing field, whatever uh, component of the college process you wanna consider. We consider that not an accident, but something that is that is designed, that is ultimately um, step by step put together with the students' um, influence at the top of that. So we work with students from day one uh, to start what we call a personalized, a personalized college plan. And every aspect of your time at QU will be involved in this, from academics with your faculty advisor, whether it's career development through the Quest Center, uh, experiential learning through internships, research, study abroad, we have all of it, which I'll hit upon later, uh, spiritual and service opportunities. So everything falls into that plan so that ultimately you not are all, you're not only successful in your journey here, but also once you journey away from QU. As part of that, we consider an affordable college experience at the utmost importance to be <laughs> uh, sure that ultimately you can succeed. All-inclusive tuition is now a new part of that. So every student at QU has their textbooks included in their tuition cost. There's no student fees, no parking fees, no hidden technology fees. The, the usual bit by bit that maybe your, your siblings received on their billing statement, none of that. It's one lump sum for tuition and books. All right, so what you need to know about us. So we are an undergraduate as well as a graduate school. Uh, undergraduate, we offer uh, more than 40 programs. I think I counted the other day, it's maybe 52. Um, 
that's anywhere from nursing to communication to pre-law. In addition to that, I mentioned the Quest Center earlier. Uh, they handle service learning. All of our students uh, do come in and complete a certain number of service hours. For most of our students transferring in, it's usually about 10 hours over the total time um, that they're here. Uh, they also handle study abroad, great study abroad opportunities where uh, usually you take a course, uh, you're out of the country for 10 days after the course is completed. So not only do you get that study study abroad experience, you get college credit for it, and you're not away for a semester or a year. In addition to that, we have a thriving campus life. We have about 1,100 to 1,200 students. In spite of that, 30 clubs and orgs listed there, uh, fine arts and performing arts. Um, we have our own art gallery here. We have our own uh, music performance hall. There's even our own theater for our theater courses. Plus we have over 20 NCAA Division II athletic teams here. City of Quincy, as I mentioned before, located along the Mississippi River, about 10 minutes away from Missouri. Um, one of the biggest things I want to point out here is internship opportunities. We have over 125 corporations in the city of Quincy, and almost every major I can think of here has at least two to three, maybe even four direct networks for internships. If there is an opportunity you want outside of the Quincy area, maybe home, maybe out of state. We have placed thousands of students over the years um, with, let's see here, CNN and ESPN and the Miami Dolphins, just to name a few. So what can you expect from transfer admissions? So we too offer um, transfer credit evaluations, unofficial, official transcripts. You wanna know right away before you start even applying to QU, we will talk with you about your credits and usually we get back to you within 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, we'll also work with you uh, early degree progress checks. If you started your college journey already at a two year school, uh, we will work with you every semester to to ensure that ultimately your credits fit right within your program so that you finish up here within two years. Uh, official admissions uh, process is right there. Um, for the most part, our students transferring in are typically juniors. Um, so they usually just have to send official college transcripts. If students are transferring in with less than 60 credit hours or an associates, we do usually like to see an official high school transcript just to verify your high school graduation. Um, great scholarship opportunities here. Any student who is admitted to QU, and we are looking for at least a 2.0 GPA, you were guaranteed uh, anywhere from $8,000 to $17,000 a year. That is solely based on your GPA and the number of credit hours that transfer over. I'm going to click on this real quick. Hopefully the uh, link spirits are still with me today. Oh, good. Good, good, good. All right, here's our transfer matrix. So ultimately you find your GPA, your number of hours, and there's your scholarship. Um, so that's, that's our main one. Everyone is eligible for one of those if they have been admitted to QU. And then you can see some other ones there too. Um, one thing to keep in mind, we are open for business. Uh, whether you wanna conduct a virtual visit or an on-campus visit, there's our visit information there. And last but not least, here's my contact info, which I'll also put in the little writing box there. Um, if you have any questions or wanna reach out about setting up a visit and thank you very much. Thank you. We're on to our next institution, Hannibal LaGrange University. Hello, it is wonderful that everyone is able to join us today. All right, so I am with Hannibal LaGrange University. My name is Rachel Abrahamson. I am one of the admissions counselors here in our office and we love our transfer students. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of what our campus looks like, we're located in Hannibal, Missouri. So we are also right along the Mississippi River. We're roughly an hour and 30 minutes north of St. Louis. So it's really easy to go into the city to have a good time while you are here at school. Uh, check out the zoo and Grant's Farm. Uh, I'm from South of St. Louis originally, so I do enjoy the city and I also equally enjoy being an hour and a half away from it. So uh, 
We are right along the Mississippi. We're well known as being the home of Mark Twain. And here you can see a view of our campus in the springtime. So we have a beautiful sprawling campus with many of our buildings. We have been around since 1858 and we have been on our current campus since 1929. So we are a very old school and we are proud of our history and how we have been able to grow as the years have gone by. So here, let's just to talk about a little bit about Hannibal LaGrange or HLGU as we refer to it here on campus. So we have we are a Christian university. We are actually owned by the Missouri Baptist Convention. So you are required to attend a chapel if you are living on campus or if your school hours are going to be right around the time for chapel. So next year chapel is going to be at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays. But we also are a smaller campus. So we have right around a thousand students that are here on campus at any given time. So don't let our small size uh, throw you off though. We have a lot of really big opportunities that are available to our students. Because of our size, you are able to get involved in a whole lot of things that are happening here on campus. So you can be a wrestler and try out for our theater production. Uh, you will get a chance to interact with the staff. You'll be able to interact with faculty. Uh, people are going to know who you are and your professors are going to notice if you are not showing up for class for some reason. And if there it really is something that's going on with you, someone is going to know about it. And they will come up and they'll ask you about it. Uh, we're like a large family here on campus just because of our size and being able to know everybody. So we cost right around $33,000 a year. This includes your housing, meals, and your tuition, as well as um, some of your general fees that all students are going to need to pay. We are transfer friendly and we're also military friendly. So if you have been in the military and you are looking to continue your education, uh, you can check us out. We do have someone who works with the VA and so they are able to help you get everything squared away with them. So that way you will be able to attend and use your GI Bill. We also have a lot of scholarship opportunities. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more on another slide, but know that we have a lot of scholarship opportunities that are out there. We also like to look at our campus as being an investment opportunity for you. It's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in your future. And yes, there is a bit of a financial investment that's involved in there as well. But we want you to be able to be developed as a whole person. We want you to grow spiritually. We want you to grow, uh, socially, we want you to grow academically, and we are all a part of that. So this is just a little bit about our financial aid and how financial aid works here at Hannibal LaGrange. So 100% of our students who are able to be admitted will receive financial aid in the form of an academic scholarship. So as long as you are able to be admitted, which for a transfer student, that means that you have at least a 2.0 cumulative grade point average, and that you have completed at least 24 hours of college credit, you will be able to receive an academic scholarship. And our lowest academic scholarship for a transfer student is $5,500. And those scholarships will go up to 10,000. And these are all based on your cumulative GPA. So if you have less than 24 credit hours, we will be asking you for a high school transcript as well as your ACT scores or SAT or even CLT. We accept all three of those if you have less than 24 credits. And you can also see on here that seven out of 10 seniors have jobs or are, have plans to go on to graduate schools. We also award quite a bit in institutional scholarships. So not only do you receive an academic scholarship, but you're also to have two additional stackable scholarships here at Hannibal LaGrange. Those are performance-based They can and they can also be major-based. So not all of our majors will have scholarships associated with them, but many of them will. And then our performance-based ones, it could be fine arts, it can be athletics. And then we even have some students who actually participate in, on two different athletic teams as well. So if you have any questions about Hannibal LaGrange University, I encourage you, you are welcome to email me. My email is on the screen. There's also my phone number, which will take you directly to my office phone. But one of our other counselors who works here in the Missouri area is Scott Douglas, and his phone number is available there as well. And if you ever forget how to get a hold of us, you are welcome to just go to the employee directory with a last name like Abrahamson. I am the first person listed. So I can promise you that I will get your email as long as you click on that link. 
and feel free. You, we are open for business as well. So you are welcome to go on ahead and apply. We have rolling admissions and we would love to see you here on campus for a visit, either virtually or in person. Thank, Thank you, you so much. we appreciate it. No problem. We're on to our next institution, Truman State. Lindsay, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Maybe check your mute there. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Okay. The floor is yours. Perfect. Okay. Now I'll get my presentation up and going. Sorry about that. All righty. Um, so welcome, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I am the admissions counselor for transfer programs at Truman State University. Um, Truman State University was established in 1867. Um, we are the only public liberal arts and sciences university in the state of Missouri and one of few across the nation. And that's just because the liberal arts and sciences is typically reserved for private schools. So we like to say that we offer that private school education at the public school price. Now with that, um, this is our location. I like to say we're located in the middle of everywhere. Um, we're about three hours from both Kansas City and St. Louis. Um, and our closest large city is Quincy, uh, about an hour and a half away. Um, same for Columbia as well. Um, Truman by the numbers, our student population is about 4,300 um, with 266 graduate students. Um, that leaves an average freshman class size of 25 students, but an average upper level class size of about 18 students as well. Um, we also have a student to faculty ratio of 14 to one. So what that really means for you is that you're getting that individualized attention here, a lot of mentorship opportunities. Um, and we're definitely big on research for undergraduate students because we don't have a whole lot of graduate programs. And so our undergraduate students are the ones completing that. Um, as I mentioned, our academics, we do have 49 majors and 62 minors. Um, we also have a number of pre-professional tracks like pre-med, pre-dental, pre-law, those types of things. Um, and about 10 graduate programs now, which we're expanding. Um, the popular programs you can see are listed down here. Um, this year, we've actually added um, a music therapy degree to our programs as well. Um, and so we're hoping to continue to add more programs as the years progress as well. Um, when it comes to transferring credit, um, we have um, a website that you can go to to see if your current courses will transfer to Truman pretty easily. Uh, it's called willittransfer.truman.edu. Um, you'll just type in your institution's name and then you can search the courses there to see if your courses will transfer to Truman. When it comes to housing, we have six different residence halls on campus that students can live in. Um, we also have a campus apartment available as well, the Campbell Apartments. Uh, but really, if you're wanting to get that college experience, we always encourage students to live in our um, residence halls. Um, we did just um, have a pet-friendly residence hall open up um, Dobson Hall. And so if you wanted to bring your pet with you, um, that's definitely an option as well. Um, you can bring like a small dog, a cat. Uh, it was really popular this year. Uh, and so definitely a fun time there as well. And you don't even have to have a pet to live in the residence hall either because you can live with someone who has a pet as well. When it comes to student life, we have over 230 student organizations. Um, a number of those organizational types are listed here. Um, a point, an important one that I always like to point out is our student activities board. Um, they're really the people who bring different events to campus, um, different concerts, speakers, things like that. Um, so they're really the ones that make the Truman campus lively. Um, and so if you're involved in that, um, it's definitely great. Uh, a lot of those students get to meet the celebrities that come to campus. And so it's a fun time there as well. Um, and then we are an NCAA Division II school. We have 16 varsity sports, but if we don't have a varsity for sport, we typically have an intramural sport or a club sport associated with that as well. When it comes to our cost, um, here are our breakdowns. Our in-state tuition is about 18,000, out of state about 25,000, but we never want students to have to pay that much. Um, so we do offer a number of scholarships available for transfer students. Um, specifically, the most common uh, scholarship awarded is going to be our transfer recognition scholarship, um, which I'll show on the next slide, um, but you can see some of the other scholarships here as well. Um, one of the big ones that we have is a Phi Theta Kappa uh, scholarship. Not only do we have an automatic scholarship for $1,000 a year, but we also have a competitive scholarship that it's a full tuition room and board scholarship. And we typically give around um, two or three of those each year as well. So this is that um, scholarship breakdown there. You can see having a 3.25 GPA or above will get you some form of scholarship through that scholarship um, in state and out of state. Um, and then obviously getting additional scholarship on top of that. Um, all of our scholarships are stackable um, with the exception of the Midwest Student Exchange Program scholarship. 
And so when it comes to applying to Truman, um, these are the materials that you'll need. Um, we do accept the common application, so you can fill that out and submit that to us as well. Um, we require all college, co all college transcripts, excuse me, um, an essay of one to three pages, an activities list or resume. Um, and then if you have less than 24 transferable post high school credits, we do require that ACT or SAT score in high school transcripts. However, you can transfer to Truman um, even after you only have 12 credit hours. Um, we do have a holistic review, so you don't have to have any sort of minimum GPA. We basically look at everything that you send to us. With that, this is my contact information. Um, we are having virtual visits and in-person visits, so I encourage you to reach out um, if you're interested in learning more. Um, we definitely would love to see you on campus sometime soon. Thank you. We'll turn it over to our last presenter, the Missouri Scholarship and Loan Foundation. Hello, let me get my screen shared here. Okay, so my name is Taylor Grimm and I am the program manager for Missouri Scholarship and Loan Foundation. Um, so tonight as you're listening to all this information from all these wonderful schools that you may be interested in transferring to, you might get that question that comes to mind about how do I pay for this. Um, so scholarships and grants can be a really big part of the equation of paying for college, and today I'm happy to tell you a little bit about the scholarships and grants that Missouri Scholarship and Loan Foundation has to offer. So if you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to drop them in the chat. So to tell you a little bit about our organization, we are a nonprofit that offers scholarships, grants, and interest-free loans to Missouri students who are attending Missouri schools. So this includes both four-year and two-year institutions, and also both private and public institutions in Missouri. Um, for this presentation in particular, our programs cover all of the institutions who have presented, with the exception of Quincy, unfortunately. Um, I grew up not too far from Quincy, so I do feel sad to say that. Um, but all of our programs are for Missouri students attending attending Missouri institutions, and of course, Quincy's right over the border. Um, so I wanted to tell you about some of these programs that we have for current college students. Um, <clears throat> as a transfer student, you're not an incoming student, um, and so you are a current college student, and you're going into your junior, I'm sorry, your sophomore, junior, or senior year, most likely. Um, and so we have a few programs that are for those type of students in specific. So the first program we have is the Purdue Emerging Leader Scholarship, which is for college sophomores, juniors, or seniors that display leadership on their college campuses. So this scholarship is up, um, up to $5,000 a year and is renewable for a total of up to three years. So this application is currently open on My Scholarship Central, which is um, a site that I'll talk about a little bit more later, and the application closes May 31st. All two-year and four-year schools in Missouri are eligible for this scholarship, so if that's um, where you're going to end up being, uh, end up attending next year, we really encourage you to apply for this scholarship. So next I wanted to quickly tell you about two grant programs that we have for current college students. Um, both of these grants programs are um, for special circumstances, so I'll just review them really quickly. The Director's Choice Emergency Grant is for students who are facing an emergent financial situation that may cause them to leave school. So we can provide some emergency funds to make sure that that student doesn't have to leave school. Our newest program is the Finish Line Degree Completion Grant, and that is a program that's designed to help students who have a back balance with the school that is preventing them from completing their degree. The last program for current college students that I wanted to tell you about tonight is the, our interest-free, fee-free loan called MoFelt. This is a gap loan program to help Missouri students attending Missouri institutions to fill the gap after all their federal aid, state aid, institutional aid, and other aid such as private scholarships are applied. So if after the student applies all of those great things that they've received and there's still a gap between that and their cost of attendance, um, that's when MoFelt can come in and the student is eligible to apply for MoFelt. MoFelt replaces other types of gap funding such as plus loans or alternative loans but MoFelp is interest-free and free, fee-free for the life of the loan, so it can be a really good alternative to those types of loans, such as the PLUS loans. Um, for this upcoming academic year, you need to meet the general criteria that we have listed on this slide. 
the new application isn't available yet. It won't be available until late May or early June, but when it is available, you can find it on our website and information about all of our programs on our website, moslf.org. So our scholarship applications, um, all of them that we have, but especially that Purdue Emerging Leader Scholarship that I was telling you about, um, we have that application on a website called My Scholarship Central. So this is a scholarship search tool and application site with over 100 different scholarship opportunities across the state of Missouri. So we really like this website a lot. Um, we have chosen to use it and to put our applications on there because it's easy for students to use. And once a student goes on there to apply for something, say our Purdue Emerging Leader Scholarship, um, they also see other types of opportunities that they are eligible for, and they can apply for those, and they're automatically matched with those um, applications. And so that can really help them maximize those scholarship dollars that they get. So every dollar that you can get in scholarships or grants is a dollar that you don't have to pay back in loans. So there is a lot of money on My Scholarship Central. Last year, over $9.4 million was awarded to Missouri students. So My Scholarship Central is one website with two tools. The first tool is the search tool. So on the search tool, you choose the region where you live, and then you can see all the scholarship providers that serve your area, um, even those who don't have their applications on My Scholarship Central, and then you can follow their links and learn more about their programs and apply to their programs. The second tool is the application feature. So to apply for one of the over 100 scholarships on My Scholarship Central, you first fill out a general application with your basic information, and then from there, you'll be shown a list of scholarship opportunities that you are eligible for. Uh, for these applications, you'll need to answer a few more specific questions for that opportunity and complete the essay or, or whatnot if one is required, and then you're done. So if you if more opportunities come on the site later that you're eligible for, you'll get an email, say, hey, you're eligible for this, come back and apply for it. So it's, it's, it's a really great resource for students. And we really encourage you to go on there and take a look. Um, go on there, apply for a Purdue Emerging Leader Scholarship, um, but apply for lots of other things too and really maximize the amount of scholarships that you're going to get that will help you pay for school. So please feel free to reach out with any questions about our programs and let us know if, you, um, if we can help with your scholarship search. If you have any questions about My Scholarship Central in particular, you can contact Caitlin Venta. Um, if you have questions about scholarship search, please reach out to me. And we appreciate your time tonight. So thank you. Thank you. In the time we have left, we're going to go through a quick Q&A. We'll ask our presenters to offer their thoughts on a variety of topics, the first of which is, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? We'll start at the stop, top with the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Is this an open question for anyone? Yep, Julie, if you wanna just offer your thoughts uh, sure. to our attendees. Yeah, um, so I'd say anyone going through the transfer process, obviously the first thing you want to think of is your credits and how they're going to transfer and just thinking ahead at what schools have the degrees that you're interested in and, um, you know, fishing around to those institutions, how your credits transfer, um, or if you're just starting at, say, a two-year school working to transfer, um, you know, look into do they have guides on what courses you should take if you're wanting to transfer there later. Um, and also, you know, think about affordability, um, you know, kind of those sort of things. I'd say maybe just major on working on, you know, using your, your credits well that you've already taken and seeing where they fit. Because every student usually wants to graduate in like a, a timely manner. So you don't want to go somewhere where you won't use as many of your credit hours as you could elsewhere. Thank you. Quincy University? Absolutely. One thing. Uh, I want to stress is the importance of visiting campus, um, whether it's in person, virtual, whatever the case may be. I know COVID has thrown a wrench in a lot of typical visit setups, uh, but just from the, the schools that uh, I've uh, either seen their sites or we have, you know, comrades there, uh, I think we've all really upped our game on, you know, virtual content um, as well as 
the opportunity to, you know, use Zoom and, and schedule at least, you know, campus tours, meetings with admissions, faculty, coaches. So you definitely have options out there. You know, we have a saying around here, you wouldn't buy a house, hopefully, sight unseen. Uh, you hopefully wouldn't do the same thing with your academic future either. It's a big deal. And making that step, whether it's a virtual one first or and then maybe a campus visit, um, it really helps you to be able to get a feel for campus get all your questions answered, and just ultimately know in your gut whether or not that's going to be the best fit for you. Annabelle LaGrange University? Uh, be talking to your admissions counselor, because we know all the people that we can go to to get your, uh, your questions answered, whether that's the registrar or the person who would be your advisor. We know who we can go to in order to get your questions answered. Um, I was a transfer student, so I completely understand the headache that it could possibly be to make sure that all of your credits are transferring and that it's a smooth transition. So talking to your counselor and asking the right questions so that way we know how to get you the right answers is a huge thing that you can do. And it makes uh, the transition easier for you. It makes us feel better knowing that we're getting you the right information. And it also ensures that you're where you need to be whenever you do transfer. Thank you. Last but not least, Truman State. Uh, along with what Rachel said, it's really important to actually ask those questions. Um, when it comes to one of the biggest things that I always hear about is, oh, I, I didn't hear about that in the admissions process. And well, I don't know what to tell you unless you ask those questions to me. So really um, anything that you are concerned about or anything that you think you know may come up that you need to know about, uh, don't be afraid to ask those questions because they can be really important in the long run. Thank you. Our next topic, what is your favorite event or transit tradition, excuse me, on campus, University of Missouri, St. Louis? Um, so my favorite event that we do is our Mirth Day Festival. So um, it happens kind of towards the end of April, uh, kind of when everyone's like winding down and it's uh, kind of like an um little big birthday party, but we host an actual festival out by our rec center. We get festival rides, a ton of different food trucks come and they're there for like several, like several days. So it's lots of fun for the students to kind of relax, take a break. I'm sorry, my dog decided to just start eating. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that's my favorite event. It's lots of fun for the staff and faculty and students. Thank you, Quincy. Uh, definitely Hawk Wild. So usually the second to last week of the spring semester or maybe even the last week before finals, um, we have what we call Hawk Wild where it's non-traditional uh, Olympic games. And so students, faculty and staff form teams and we go through a, a weekly series of the most ridiculous things you've ever seen. Um, we, we have a uh, big, like, uh, how do I put this plastic suits that people can wear. It's like a big tarp. They have jello wrestling. Um, they have bouncy house competitions. How high can people jump? Um, just silly, ridiculous things like that. It is so much fun. Um, it's a great way to de-stress before finals. Um, it's also one of the most memorable. Usually when alumni come back, they say, oh yeah, my Hawkwell team, I had professor so-and-so and Friar such and such and the financial aid secretary. So it's, it's, it's a good time. Great uh, community building. Thank you. Annabelle LaGrange, please. So my favorite event that happens here on campus that is a tradition for us is the Trojan Wars. Uh, the Trojan is our mascot and it is a month long competitions of the battle of the dorms. So our dorms all compete against each other doing absolutely ridiculous games. And at the end of the month, right before homecoming, the golden helmet is awarded to whichever dorm has accumulated the most points. But it doesn't end there because then it is a competition to keep the helmet because somehow the helmet will disappear sometimes a few weeks later sometimes a few months later and then you have to follow its instagram to try and figure out where it's at because yes the trojan helmet has its own instagram <laughs> thank you that's great truman state please 
Yeah. So probably my favorite event is going to be the Truman experience or like the first week that um, both first year and transfer students get to acclimate to campus prior to new students uh, or returning students coming back to campus. Um, and during that week, we have uh, similar things. We have um, the uh, College Cup competition. Um, and so each residence hall will fight for the College Cup. Um, we also have a number of different events um, run by faculty and staff to kind of get to know the campus. Um, and then we also connect with our town. Um, so Kirksville puts on the um, new student welcome each year. Um, and basically all of the local vendors um, and shops will set up booths downtown and give out free swag and food. Um, and so you basically can decorate your dorm with things from Kirksville uh, before you even have a chance to go to any of the stores. So it's just a really fun welcome to um, the community um, and then also so to campus as well. Thank you. We'll move on to our last question. Give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Again, starting at the top, please. Um, interesting fact about Umsel. Uh, I'd say probably. Oh, sorry, <laughs> dogs eating too fast. Um, so I'd say probably that we are. Um, still primarily a commuter institution. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, so probably around 12% of our students live on campus. Um, primarily, most of them still do commute, especially in the St. Louis area. And we do have more transfer students than uh, first time freshmen, probably at a 75 to 25% um, scale. So I think that's very interesting. Um, also, just the fact that we have so many research opportunities for undergraduate students specifically, since we're a research institution, I think is something that um, attracts a lot of undergraduate students in general. Well, maybe I'm going to unmute myself. All right. Um, so one, I guess, fun fact, interesting, uh, different, I don't know, whatever adjective you want to use, we actually still have a very uh, large friar presence on our campus. So we are a Franciscan institution. Uh, we do have friars at QU uh, to facilitate um, service learning. Um, as well as Catholic masses ceremonies, although sometimes students will uh, arrive on campus never engaging with a, a friar thinking it's a Trekkie convention. No, this is not where Star Trek is filmed. Um, the, these are legit friars. Um, and so it, it's a wonderful opportunity to connect to our roots um, and our culture. And they're also just some of the, the coolest, kindest people you'd ever meet. We kind of call them uh, Christian hippies at best. And it's just one more interesting facet of, 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 of being on our small community. Thank you. Up next, Hannibal LaGrange. So a fun fact about HLGU is that we were founded in 1858, like I said earlier, and then we moved to our current location in 1929. But at that time, we were actually a dairy farm and so we actually have a cow skeleton in our science center that supposedly was found here on the campus. We affectionately call it Bessie. And instead of having a Christmas tree in the science center, we have a Christmas cow. Very good. Last but not least, Truman State. Um, well, we have a lot of fun facts, but I think one of the probably the most important facts um, is 50% of our students will graduate with no student loan debt. Um, and we've held that uh, statistic for as long as I've been here. Um, and so it's definitely something that we're a very financially doable school as well. Um, and so definitely just kind of coming to visit campus. Um, one of the, I guess, funner things um, we're we're like a, a ghost campus and that there's a lot of lore that there's ghosts in a lot of our buildings. And so it's always fun to kind of just hear about those stories as well. You can always find them all on Wikipedia as well. Very good. Some great information from our panelists. We want to thank them today and we want to thank all of our students for joining. We've got a quick four question survey out on the website. So we'd ask that you fill that out so we can get more information about how to improve the sessions. Also, again, sign up for more sessions uh, if you have interest in any other institutions. Lastly, a note reminder that the recording will be on strivescan.com slash Missouri. Once again, thanks to all our panelists and attendees. Hope everyone has a great night.